Hey guys, welcome back. I set my camera pretty high this time. So we'll see if it's gonna work properly as it used to. Well, a uh, big number of you asked me, Mayo, can you show us something against Karakan? And it's time to show you something interesting. Uh, probably has its own name, although searching over the web, I couldn't find anything that specific, but doesn't matter. I'm gonna call it my way because uh, during this corona period of time and all these lockdowns I just decided to play this and to try it out against Karakan. So it's E4, C6, 92 and we're gonna call it Corona Specialty. Uh, I know that there are like a couple of um, top GMs including Nigel Short, Rauf Mamedov, sometimes Vashiela Grav who used to try out this system uh, but I actually developed this system uh, really, really, uh, and very, actually on a high level played it and uh, made like more than 70%, 75% score uh, uh, with 92. So let's get started and hope you're going to enjoy this one. After they play d5, we go with e5. Such a surprising move, you have to admit. You just uh, play like Karakan, but where is your pawn on d4? What is your knight on e2 doing? You're probably uh, wondering. Well, they can play a couple of moves. d4, e6, bishop f5, and they can also go for c5. Let's get started and see what happens when they go with move d4. You just go c3, and they do not have time to play anything like d3 because you play knight f4 immediately. Uh, go after the d3 pawn and after this queen f3 and say goodbye to your pawn. For example, I won like this uh, two blitz games. My opponents both played knight d7 and they were quite happy because uh, they thought, okay, uh, maybe this guy thought that he was gonna win the bishop, uh, uh, win the pawn, but that's not gonna be the case. But I was very satisfied because after bishop and knight d3, bishop d3, queen d3, not bishop d3 because I would lose the bishop pair, knight d5, here I just go like this. I had the bishop pair and, uh, and afterwards I somehow managed to crack the opponent defenses. So uh, they have to go with c5 and on c5, Ralph Mamedov, uh, one of the top uh, Azeri GMs, has his own specialty uh, with b4. Uh, that's kind of Corona Gambit that I want to show you maybe next week and uh, hopefully you're going to enjoy that one so much. But let's just discuss uh, briefly the, the point of b4. You just break these pawns in the center and for example in case they go with b6, you have a very nice free couple of guys try to keep the flexibility of the pawn structure playing b6. And then when I play d4, uh, I don't care about your flexibility, man. I do care about your rook uh, in the best case scenario for us or peace in uh, a little bit worse scenario, but we're anyways going to end up being completely winning. On the other hand, uh, if they go with... Uh, queen d5, you just go with d3. It's a nice move because you give them chance to take the pawn on e5. Taking the pawn on e5 wouldn't bring them anything uh, because after bishop f4, b takes, c takes, it gives you like a great initiative. c takes before, on the other hand, doesn't uh, give them anything either because you play this 92 and you want to go for a flexible knight f3 or just want to jump somewhere with this knight. After they take on d4, you play bishop e2 and you end up with a great activity of your pieces and even though you're down a pawn, your position looks very lovely. Uh, if they take on c3, knight c3, queen e5, bishop e f4, queen h5, I found one game when the guy played queen a4 and played b5 uh, had like upper hands in this game. Afterwards, he played a very interesting h4, g4, and bishop g2 and won his game. I just have to say that I very much like h3 uh, immediately because I like to go with g4 afterwards. Uh, on the other hand, engines even say knight b5 with almost winning position, but th th that's, that's not uh, like 
it's more it depends more on your style and what do you prefer in your games so you can do whatever you prefer and whatever you like all things considered when they play d3 you go knight f4 c4 and looks like these pawns looks really dangerous to us and we don't know what to do and we don't know how to uh, fight against them and uh, the the only move is knight a3 quite interesting thing they can play uh, b5 because you can take but you can also play queen f3 and they only have one move believe it or not it's g5 uh, fun fun thing that they have to play g5 most of your opponents won't do that after you play knight a3 you do not only threaten this pawn but in case they any go with anything else well c4 pawn is defended and for example grandmaster lasnichka played against mamedov in uh world in world i believe blitz or rapid championship played like this 95 what a powerful move threatening this queen and harassing uh harassing it with 95 93 and now looks like c4 pawn uh is about to die the point is they have to play bishop e6 grandmaster lasnichka played b5 and completely forgot about queen f3 and say goodbye to your work uh, full of tricks so he has to play bishop e6 g3 followed by bishop g2 f4 castles chase that bishop away with f5 weaken the pawn on c4 and your position is just gonna look really really great uh just because of this uh, that i t told you already that i have to go with g5 and you go with this beautiful uh, pawn push e6 when they take the knight what an unusual position they have to take and here if your opponent knows so much you would just have to shake his hand and say man i'm offering you a draw uh, very nice line of course there are like plenty of possibilities to deviate and to go for something else and you don't have to play and you don't have to uh, do a line just the way i showed you so if you have any suggestions uh, interesting feedbacks let me know and post a comment on the other hand they can play e6 what is this this is not a Karakan, this is not a French because in French by now they would have c5 without wasted time for a c6 if it's Karakan, the light square bishop wouldn't be imprisoned on c8 so d4 c5 c3 and just remember here all we care about is complete flexibility knight comes to d2 followed by knight f3 and after this you do have problems to keep controlling d4 and to have like a proper defense of this pawn and you do have problems with the light square bishop well only at first glance then you go with g3 followed by bishop h3 and that's how you solve the problem of the light square bishop and that's how you uh, basically uh, go for like a full initiative and uh, uh, afterwards make castle you even threaten to take on f5 and uh, consequently have like a proper control of the d4 central square apart from that they can also play bishop f5 uh, searching for the name uh, because i wanted to give its name but just like i told you we're gonna call, uh, call it uh, maya's corona specialty uh, bishop f5 knight g3 bishop g6 in all those uh, forums i found h4 and now they have to play h6 or h5 here uh, we transpose into something that happens after e4 c6 uh, d4 d5 e5 bishop f5 knight e2 i played one tournament game i won fairly easy uh turn that game but after bishop d3 you just capture by pawn capturing by pawn is aimed against c5 because you can always capture and afterwards push your pawn up to d4 uh, here black has to decide whether he wants to do h5 or h6 so let's go and let's get started with this ones in case they go for h6 it's weak you just play h5 d4 play bishop d3 exchange these bishops and take by c pawn that's a crucial moment of this line no one who wants to play this variation should ever forget about this thing on the other hand you just have to know that most of my opponents play c5 most of them c5 you just capture play d4 play knight c3 bring your 
king there they can play castle because of bishop h6 and when they play king f8 you just go with castles crucial move comes now we can't play f4 i wish i could but the, the d4 pawn is hanging and afterwards they would just have a good control of the f5 square and you play knight c on e2 knight c on e2 over supports the d4 and gives white f4 followed by f5 after like rook c8 bishop e3 you just uh, that's why you removed your knight to over protect d4 and to afterwards go with f4 and f5 of course you just have a killing position and your opponent uh, probably should throw the towel into the ring because he's about to get mated very soon in case of queen b6 instead of c5 which is way more common and way better looks like oh man we're about to lose the d4 pawn just like the b2 pawn you don't care you play bishop e3 you sack the pawn for a full initiative here you cannot even imagine how many nice games i won playing like this and it really turned out to be more than uh good for example uh, i beat a guy whose nickname was the belgian on play chess it was like 10 years ago the guy went like this he played here queen b6 bringing the queen back into the game uh, actually he just wants to say my queen has done its job let me put it back into the game in my camp and i should be doing fine i played castle and my opponent played bishop e7 not entirely a special thing i believe 97 is way better but i'm gonna show you what to do if that case in that case I played queen g4, he played king f8, break a b1, f4 to do f5, and what else do you want, man? What else do you want? You have an upper hand after f5, king is terrible on f8. Look at their development and all these pieces being on the back rank. Man, this guy uh, felt the danger, played f5, and I was on the top of my task. Big Maya, knight takes f5. After that, queen f5, check push my pawn to f5 and the guy said okay enough of torture so he resigned here i believe that the better move was 97 in which case we should be going with f4 and you all the time have to put all your efforts in pushing like mm, i don't know this f5 and opening the f5 on the king side uh, after net f5 net f5 uh, in one game i did rook b1 uh, in one game I did rook b1, queen b3, rook fc1, and I managed to win uh, pretty pretty nicely. Then I analyzed and turned out that g4, which uh, looks way crazier, uh, looks even better and uh, turns out to be even more dangerous for them. When they take, you just take by queen, you threaten e6, you threaten this check, you want to play rook a b1, uh, they can hardly hold uh, and um, uh, defend uh, against such a big pressure and initiative by white and that's why i'm of opinion that h5 should be the only move here uh, grandmaster from argentina felgar played like a whole bunch of games with e6 i'm not a big fan of that move i would suggest you to go into one of the main lines with the bishop d3 that uh, ex-world champion boris pasky used to go for so bishop to d3 after bishop to d3 c takes d3 and to go with a line like this uh what do you have to know about this line uh in practice uh, it scores a little bit worse uh than the previously seen when they play h6 and we already have our opponent h5 because we have like a good control of the center here that's not the case here opponent h5 believe it or not does a lot better even though it's more committal by black and uh, if they go g6 you just bring your knight like this any c5 you take play knight f3 and oppose it you know more or less classic fashion where white should be better uh, in case uh, they go with a waiting move like knight e7 knight c3 knight e7 you just play rook to b1 going with b4 and sticking your bishop into the heart of his game uh, on g5 so when they ever if they ever play c5 you take and play d4 with a nice game i especially like this knight c on e2 uh defensive resource so i can over protect d4 give me before idea and eventually i want to break with f4 and f5 if possible 
if h6 h5 happens then they can never play g6 here they have g6 so if you go for f4 make sure that you can play f5 whether they play g6 or not and to suck everything there and just get ready to uh, play something completely crazy and in case they go with the queen b6 you play bishop e3 queen b2 knight e2 there are like whole bunch of games uh, found in these positions i expect by your opponents to uh, see probably mostly rook b1 uh, and uh, queen c7 or queen a6 if queen c7 just grab your pawn and bring it back and get like certain amount of initiative if queen a6 going for the d3 pawn i don't want to say that e8 is hanging so who cares about that pawn you just go queen e2 97 castles and uh, slowly but surely get ready to go with the knight f3 rook fc1 and you certainly have a very nice compensation i know you're down a pawn but you really have to consider the fact that i have all these pieces on the back rank and just like i told you and i'll repeat again 75 percent with white pieces against Karakan during the last six months i believe it's a pretty uh, pretty not decent it's uh, more than that and that's why we call it corona specialty uh, and finally they go with c5 on c5 i want to show you my own corona gambit but about that probably next week uh, let's go with d4 d4 is the most solid approach and in practice it has a good score for white players nigel short is the most like renowned player who used to play that and who really has great results so after uh, they simply they, they should not go for e6 because they already spent time for c6 and c5 so you just go flexibility 92 knight f3 and they previously explained you what to do in case that after d4 they take on d4 you capture by knight and when they play knight c6 i have a very nice uh, plan for white so it's not it, it, it does not depend on the move only but the plan is important you should take on c6 and you should go with bishop d3 this is how vashia played one mdl one of his games uh, preventing the light square bishop to come into the game on f5 or g4 which is initially one of the most important and crucial ideas of our Karakan players michael adams had a game in uh, uh, gibraltar 2017 you and uh, this is where we just have to stop for a moment and to tell you one thing whenever light square bishop doesn't control e6 it's time for you to break break in there and to get a great uh, activity of course that he wanted to play d4 to go with the knight on c3 or to go knight d2 knight f3 to go rookie one queen g4 in the game was g6 bishop f4 bishop g7 knight d2 and adams managed to win this game in a very nice positional style uh, adams against bianco played in gibraltar 2017. instead of that if they go for e6 you just play castles 97 92 why because this knight goes on g6 and goes after the pawn you go with knight and knight f3 and you defend that pawn after they go bishop e7 a golden rule is uh, play c3 to keep some uh, space for this bishop and when they play c5 this is an interesting uh, maneuver queen a4 followed by queen g4 please watch out queen a4 giving check and with uh, you know like tempo bringing this queen onto the queens onto the king side preparing slowly h4 h5 to attack the king to attack the king side and to push the typical h4 and h5 in the game that i found here the guy played c4 bishop c2 a5 rookie one played bishop g5 rookie b1 and after knight g5 keep in mind that a rook on e1 has to keep an eye on the e5 pawn that's a crucial uh piece in your strategy knight g5 rook b8 and uh, the guy just dismantled uh black positionally terrible bishop great knight weakened pawn structure uh, feeling like a bone in his throat and finally just push this pawn afterwards uh, he managed to win this game in a very nice style I have to say that I like it a lot and finally uh, we're just reaching to the point in where instead of bishop a6 and e6 they, they go with g6 because they need to make something useful because they still feel lots of problems with inactivity of the light square bishop so you go with castle and 
you just want to play knight d2 transferring this knight to f3 but before that make sure to play h3 play rook e1 well, the dark square bishop should go and support the e5 pawn with bishop f4 with a very nice game finally when you play c3 i want to show you what happens e6 we've seen three times so far a uh, golden knight f3 followed by g3 bishop h3 and short castle why bishop h3 to control 97 knight f5 uh, second thing in case they go with bishop g4 you can play bishop e3 what nigel short did against granda zuniga played queen d2 played f3 kicked that bishop away and with a more space uh kill his opponent uh with the bishop pair on the open f file and i really have to say that i enjoy uh, nigel short's position very much uh, uh, on the other hand you can also play h3 kicking this bishop away and when they take just capture by bishop and what kind of advantage do we have we have a bishop pair what kind of advantage do they have potentially weak d for a central pawn is it a big problem not because they lack the uh, light square bishop around the king now it turns out to be good and after 92 you play and you threaten rook b1 threatening queen and threatening pawn on b7 if they play bishop b4 knight b3 i'll show you one game the guy played bishop b5 bishop c1 and played knight a5 followed by queen a4 what a terrible game by black uh, king remained in the center weak and he just got killed uh, just because of this uh, we've seen like every single possibility and actually realized that they cannot play any of these moves but I want to show you two short games played by uh, MBL uh, white pieces uh, and uh, played by Gashimov in one of his games for example in Gashimov's game his opponent did h5 like uh, one of those uh, Karakan g6 setups where you just want to have like control of the light squares uh, Gashimo was on the top of his task played knight f4 threatening d takes c5 with the consequent pressure on the d5 pawn c takes c takes c6 knight c3 now this guy uh, had to fill the problems uh, playing the french uh, with a pretty bad bishop on c8 but at the same time uh, pretty a committal since he played h5 after 97 bishop b5 castle that bishop b5 was just to solve the problem of his light square bishop after queen b6 bishop b3 played queen d2 and the guy played knight f5 this was the right moment to find the tactics you know that i used to give you this time and gashimov made a, a move and won so hopefully you paused the video you hopefully found it it's knight takes d5 and after the guy captured he played f takes played knight f6 took on f5 took on d7 and his opponent uh, resigned uh, in mwl uh, mwl's game happened uh, against one of a very strong gms uh, jean-marc de grave from france in a championship of france was g6 mwl in his uh, crazy tactical style went for h4 h5 knight f4 threatened d takes e5 and once again forced his opponent to do and nothing else but e6 what kind of position is this terrible french you spent like tempo for c6 and c5 uh, you have like all these pawns being on the light squares i have this uh, crucial knight on f4 so look how he killed his opponent bishop d3 queen b6 castles uh, that's a very important i would say uh, gold standard in these positions do not defend pawn on d4 we don't need it too much i mean in these positions when they play kind of uh, french in uh, with uh, with being down the tempo and having a locked bishop on c8 bishop d7 rookie one just like you see and well kept on giving up this pawn and after d takes he just went with c4 opening up the center captured by knight and once again for all of you who want to work on tactics but more importantly building up an initiative and a strong attack find the move if your move was 95 then congratulations uh, one day uh, there will be something of you as a chess player so after queen b8 knight b6 bishop g5 uh, can you imagine that he managed to beat uh, a guy who's almost 2600 such an experienced guy with 
a game like this. Terrible game for black. Rook locked on a7. Imprisoned on h7. The bishop without any activity. Bishop on f8 hasn't even managed to develop. Knight in the middle of nowhere. Uh, queen on the on the back back rank. King in the center of the board. Man, uh, this guy even lasted so much, but he couldn't anymore watch at his position and he resigned here. That's why most of these guys take on d4 and now they play bishop f5. Those who play bishop g4, once again, I want to show you the game of Nigel Short, where he killed his opponent, knight c3, e6, bishop e3, f3, g4, and went for the knight f4. Nigel Short, in three of his games, went with this plan, where he chased away the light square bishop, f3, g4, knight f4. And then, it's not that he wants to take on g6 just like that. More importantly, he wants to provoke that weakness with h4 and h5. His opponent went for a6, rook c1, and played h5. Another interesting moment. In both of these games, Nigel went for this bishop g2, because he realized that eventually pawn on d5 could... Uh, turn out to be one of the crucial weaknesses in the black scan. After h takes, f takes, bishop h7, castles, knight g6, he sacrificed on h4. I just want to tell you one thing. His opponent is a uh, well-known uh, grandmaster from Georgia, Majdalishvili, who's rated around 2650. And uh, beating up a guy like this in such a small number of moves, uh, being so you know like resourceful con uh, uh, regarding tactics is like a real thing this guy played bishop g6 to defend an f7 and rook c6 boom and after this another boom knight f6 bishop c6 captured played queen a4 and this guy couldn't stop the mate he tried to escape but after rook c1 he decided to call it a day a beautiful win by nigel short another game in 24 moves and that's why most of these guys uh, go for bishop f5. Uh, here I just have to show like the crucial things. Of course, you play knight c3, e6, and I believe this is in the spirit of the dragon. Uh, sorry, Karakhan players. They just uh, develop their light square bishop on f5. They just manage to uh, come out with that bishop before they play d6, and everything looks fine. Hold after knight g3, bishop g6, h4. We all know that they should go with. Uh, h5 rather than h6 h5 uh, where you can exchange the light square bishops get a nice game and push f4 f5 easily or where you can play bishop e3 and go with a game like this also with a3 b4 rook c1 with a very simple game on the queen side so they have to go for uh, h5 bishop e3 over protecting b2 and d4 here you have to overprotect it because they already committed themselves by taking on d4. Also, they they also have a pretty good bishop on on. Uh, I mean, since it uh, came out and it's on the open diagonal, so you have to keep your position compact. After knight h6, bishop e2, knight a5, uh, knight f5, rook c1, bishop e7, and Mamedov played knight a4, and, uh, hoping to jump with this knight onto c5 and chasing the queen away with tempo after queen before he did it uh, queen d2 king d2 uh, this guy had to take because knight b7 was threatened uh, captured by rook and he had the bishop pair advantage i'm just gonna show you like a couple more moves not much more king d7 b4 bishop g6 doubling his rooks played a3 played g4 to eventually open the game up threatened rook takes d5 pushed that h5 and played bishop g5. Eventually he managed to win this game, but for all of you who are like not e experienced enough, you get a bishop pair advantage, you have to slowly be able to somehow expand on both of these sides. c file is at the moment in your control as more, and as well as a little bit more space and a little bit more activity thanks to these bishops. I just showed you uh, games that were used and played uh, systems that were used and uh, games that were played by top GMs showed you like one or my two games but you cannot even imagine uh, how easily I used to beat up my opponents just being familiar with these model games hope you enjoy in this Corona specialty and don't forget uh, Chessable just released my book Butcher the Sicilian join in the club 
of the big Maya community uh, and uh, 93 let's butcher them all thank you bye bye guys